Hi there everybody. So today we are looking at xerophytes and their adaptations. So xerophytes are plants that live in very dry, very arid areas and therefore water loss is a real problem. Um, so the xerophytes have adaptations to try and reduce water loss. So if we're talking about water loss then most of um, these adaptations are going to be to do with water potential. So we know that if you've got an area of higher water potential and an area of lower water potential, we know that water is going to move down the water potential gradient from high to low water potential. Um, and in this situation, the high water potential that's in our um, in the in the, the cells of our xerophytes, okay, and the low water potential is in the air. Okay, so we're in a very dry areas, so the air has got very low humidity. So anything that the plant can do to decrease the steepness of that water potential gradient is going to help to reduce water loss because the steeper the gradient is, the more quickly water will be lost. So the plant is trying to reduce the steepness of the water potential gradient. Okay, so the first adaptations we're going to look at are rolled leaves and hairs. So here's a picture um, of a plant which is a xerophyte and this is actually called marum grass. Um, hang on, let me just go back a little bit. So if we look at this diagram, obviously you can see that this is rolled. Okay, We don't normally see leaves in this shape. Um, and if we look at this, what looks like the outside edge there, that's actually the lower epidermis. Um, it's relatively smooth, it's flat. This other layer here that I'm drawing around, which is very, very bumpy, this layer here is our upper epidermis. And basically then what happens is that um, the marron grass is able to curve one end and the other end around so that they are rolled. And, and the marron grass is able to do that. It's able to roll or unroll depending on the conditions. Okay, now we've got this rolled leaf um, and another interesting thing about them is that the stomata are all the way here on the upper epidermis. Now normally with leaves we think about the leaves, uh, the stomata being on the lower epidermis but in xerophytes, especially ones with rolled leaves, we see them on the upper epidermis. And then the final thing, these, these ideas are all linked together, is that we have all of these um, little hairs. Okay, so I'm drawing them in the diagram. You can see them if you look. Okay, all of these little hairs here. Now, all of these things together, the rolled leaves, um, the hairs, and the stomata being on that upper epidermis, help to reduce water loss. Because by having this area here, if you think we've got the, you know, the air's all out here, okay, the air, uh, and there obviously there's wind blowing around. By having this area here, the air inside the leaf is trapped. Um, it's not exposed to the wind, and because it's trapped, it means that the humidity in here is able to build up. And because the humidity is able to build up here, that means that the water potential in the um, air, which is right next to the stomata, the water potential here is much higher than the water potential of the air out here. So what the plant has done by rolling the leaf is reducing the water potential gradient between the cells of the leaf and the air because the air is now very humid and that reduces the rate of water loss. Because the stomata are all on this upper epidermal uh, surface, then again, obviously that means that that's the only way that water is able to leave the, the, the cells, uh, leave the leaves. If there were stomata on this surface, which is our lower epidermis, then these stomata, that would mean that the water vapour in the air spaces in the leaf was directly in contact with this very, very um, arid, very dry air out here. So the water potential gradient would be very steep. But that's not what happens. The stomata are all here, and therefore they are next to this very, very humid area which has been brought about because we've got rolled 
leaves and also hairs and the hairs also help to trap the water so we have very high humidity. Now the other really cool thing about xerophytes is they have sunken stomata so not only are they on the, uh, the, the side of the leaf which is often rolled um, they are also sunken. So this diagram here, I know that the labels are on their side, but this makes it easier to figure out what's going on. Um, this is obviously just a section, okay? And we can see here, this is our uh, stoma, okay? One of them is a stoma. If I just draw out and show you the guard cells there, and again, I'm going too far, too far ahead. Then what I've drawn here, if you think about drawing the cross section of a leaf, then you've got this uh, layer here. So all of this, this is our epidermis, okay, on both sides. And then here, and you can actually see a lot of the chloroplasts there, uh, this layer would be spongy mesophyll. So here we've got our guard cells on either side of the stoma. So this is where the, um, the water vapor will move through. So this is what connects the air with the outside air, okay, the outside air with the air space inside the leaf. Again, because you've got this very sunken stomata, this is our airspace. Now we know that the airspace within a leaf has always got very high humidity. There's lots of water vapor because the water is um, evaporating from the surface of these spongy mesophyll cells. Okay, it's moving out of the cells onto the surface, then evaporating. But because of this section here, this bit is also very high humidity. So a little bit like with the rolled leaves, um, this area helps to trap very humid air. So again, it's decreasing the water potential gradient between, um, in this case, the airspace um, and the outside air. So the water potential gradient is decreased, less water is lost. Uh, if we just compare it to what it would look like in a non xerophytic cell, so normally you'd have your epidermal layer up here, and here are the guard cells. So the guard cells uh, lead straight from the outside air straight into the airspace. So you haven't got this area here where air can be trapped. Okay, there are lots of other um, adaptations which I've summarized here. I'm not going to explain them all because the other ones are, are much more straightforward. Um, so I've explained in a bit more detail some of the ones that are a little bit trickier to understand, uh, but have a look at this and you'll see the rest of the adaptations that you need to be aware of. Okay, that's it. Thank you.